This is a young great white shark. From the moment their mother gives birth, they are essentially abandoned. If there's anything intriguing about observing them, it's that they are constantly learning about their new environment. Sometimes, it's almost like they are encountering new creatures for the first time. This shark, for example, is startled by the very rays it will depend upon for food very soon. Because bat rays are so plentiful along the California coast, nearly every time I see them near a shark, I sense I'll witness something memorable. As a photographer, however, my most memorable captures are usually with species that exist above the water literally above the water. A few years ago, if you would have told me I'd capture a white shark and a butterfly in the same frame, I would have laughed. But in nature, anything is possible, and it's what often brings us natural beauty. These are California yellowtail, and they are on a mission. What looks like they are pestering a young white shark is actually a symbiotic relationship in motion. Watch closely and you'll notice the yellowtail fish are actively pursuing the young shark. The shark appears agitated. In fact, it dives and tries to get away. As the shark ascends, you can see the pesky yellowtail are still in pursuit. It's a dance that happens very often in Southern California. And it's one I find especially intriguing when you discover that this occurs largely because of parasites. Many fish like yellowtail carry itchy parasites. In order to dislodge them, they have to rely on their environment. Because of this, some fish have evolved a variety of mechanisms to rid themselves of them, including using white sharks. The yellowtail fish pursue the sharks in order to rub the convex portion of their body along the shark's body. This action is called chafing. Most of the time, it occurs between an organism and an inanimate object, such as a sandy or rocky substrate. But the rough skin of a white shark and the denticles it consists of are a perfect texture to rub those itchy parasites off. As you can see by this shark's reaction, notice the gills flaring. The sharks really don't like to be pestered. Not everything in the ocean is natural, unfortunately. This is a white shark pursuing a mylar balloon, a balloon that likely started somewhere far away, yet ended up in the ocean where it will never break down. The balloon reads, happy birthday, an unfortunate result, but one that happens every single day and is completely avoidable just like this plastic bag. Eventually, they can end up in the mouths and stomachs of sea creatures everywhere. Sharks are curious creatures. They are not alone in being affected by human waste. Everything from plastic plates to Pepsi cardboard boxes finds its way near a shark. Plastic is everywhere, and our impact is seen daily. More and more, I'm seeing fishing tackle and various injuries to sharks. The images are always striking, but a majority of these sharks will survive. They are very resilient, at least temporarily. However, images like this serve as a reminder that we can do better. The vast majority of fishermen I know are great people. I see them daily. Sometimes it's all a matter of perspective. Not all fishermen are bad, but all mylar balloons are most certainly bad. That much is evident. 
the question is, how can humans coexist with sharks and sea life? I'd prefer to witness nature as it is, like this scene with a turtle. It's no comparison to the scenes featuring our waste as a distraction. Watching sharks from above has given me some perspective. Where instead of a mylar balloon hijacking a shark's interest, we can witness an encounter like this. Watch this closely. From high above, you see the fish evading a sea lion. What happens next is nature. The sea lion abandons its chase for a meal and decides to chase a nearby white shark instead. Perhaps a defensive move, but nonetheless, it is real nature. And that is beautiful. That's what it's all about.